Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we are going to talk about getters and setters. If you remember in previous videos, we talked about creating an instance of the class, and these are instance variables, calling the instance variable dot instance variable actually calls a getter method to determine and it returns the value of flower of the instance variable itself. So we print it. And again, specifically, you're not directly accessing the value here. You're going through a default getter method. Now, why, am I, why is this a big deal? It's a big deal because we can actually change these getter methods themselves, okay? And this is how you do it. So let's say string um, flower1 flower. Oops, I forgot to actually write get right here. Okay, so string get, you have to declare the variable, right, through string. Get is the command. And you can either do this, or of course, you could do this, return flower, right? So it's the same thing as any, you could do it that way as well, okay? Um, it's easier to read just one line function though, so I'm gonna stick with that. There's a problem here, return flower, oh, you don't need to return when you use a fat arrow. Okay, so new variable, returns the value of flower, which is white. So you should be able to put that here, new variable returns a value of, and it's a white, that's right there. Okay, so instead of using the system's default getter method, we're making our own and, and specifying it because we could do something else. Let's return hi. All right, so let's, do that one instead. So it returns high. So you can determine anything you want right inside here. Now, what's the purpose of doing something like this? It gives us a little bit more flexibility. It basically lets us know that um, we don't have to use the default and we could put anything we want right inside of here. Um, so let's do this. One reason, one um benefit behind using getter methods is if you want to change, for example, flower, let's just say it's a public variable, right? We want to change it into a private variable. So I would say string underscore oh, get underscore flower flower. All right, so declare the private variable, get, and this is the private variable here, and it returns the value of flower. So in the future, I say, hey, I don't want this to be a public variable anymore. I want it to be private. Fine, why don't I just do this and make it a private variable, right? I'm done. Well, the problem with that is that you start breaking the code because I have some code up here that says, wait a minute, flower is a variable. You just changed it and you broke my program. So if you made the um, class and I used it, I didn't realize when you upgraded the version that this is what you did and it broke my system. So that's not very nice. Uh, I hope that's clear. So don't break existing code if you can. So what you do instead, leave it where it is. So if people have this problem, okay, fine. They can go ahead and, and just keep using it. But in the future, you're going to say underscore flower is what you should be using from now on because you want the private variable to knock out this right here. And you would say that in your code, in your documentation, you would say that's depre deprecated. So you would say in the future, this is deprecated. It works now, but in the future, it's not going to work. So stop using it. All right. Don't use it anymore because eventually it's going to go away. But it's sort of giving people a warning sign that I'm not going to cut it out right now. Just sweep it from under your feet. I'm going to get rid of it in the future, give you time, however long time you need to get rid of it and so and start using um, flower underscore flower instead of flower as a private variable. OK, so if you look for the value of underscore flower, it is the same thing as flower right now. OK, so that's one way to use getter methods is to change public variables into private variables. Um, now, if you look at this, though, what's going on here? I'm just going to, for easy, for simple sake, I'm just going to call flower1, all right? And what if I wanted to say change the value of flower1? My cake 
dot flower one equals wheat. Okay, and then my cake dot flower equals rye. You you notice an error here. No setter in flower one. We're using the default getter and setter methods for flower, but for flower one, we specifically mentioned a getter method right here. So because we're not using the system's default and we're declaring it by ourselves, we have no setter method. Okay, so you cannot do this just because there's no setter method, because if you're going to go, you have to do all or nothing. You either do use the default getter and setter method, or you have to do your own. And if I don't create a setter method right here, this does not help. Okay, so what is a setter method? Setter method is what we do. We just say set. Um, flower one, um, some value, um, string value, I guess. Um, flower equals value. Okay, so what I'm going to say is that this is already been declared flower in the parameter right here. This is going to be the value of flower itself. Okay, so um, flower, this is the value of that. So va the variable value is, that's red. Okay, hang on a second. String, no, that's fine. Um, that The value equals flower one, and therefore flower will equal value also. So let's go back inside of here. After I can get the code, okay. According to this, flower one string value, that's the value. Okay, that's not truly a parameter. It's the value value of flower one. So flower one equals wheat. So this variable is wheat. Therefore, flower right here should equal wheat. And you're going to print it and see what happens. It becomes wheat. Because what you're actually saying is that for the setter method itself, in the parentheses is the equals, so flower equals, and then you can have some other characteristics itself. What's the purpose of setter method being customizable it is that it's highly, highly variable like in what you can do. It's very flexible. So you can actually add logic to this. Let's try. Okay, so we're going to add some logic to it. Let's just say um, if value value equals wheat, then flour equals no. Then actually, I'm going to make something else. Taste. Okay, then taste equals not so good, else, well, wait a minute, I'm getting a problem, else if value equals not the best typer in case you didn't realize. Um, rye taste equals yucky. Else if value equals white taste equals good else taste equals not sure you need a value for 
better value for flower. Okay, so this is all within the setter method. Okay, so flower one equals wheat and flower one, this is the value, so it equals wheat. So we're gonna print my cake dot value. And what's going on here? Oh, taste, taste, sorry. So wheat is not so good. Um, what if this was rye? Yucky. Um, what if it was um, something? Okay, something. So it's not it's not white, it's not rye, it's not wheat, it's something. So else, taste is not sure you need a better value of, for flour. Okay, so when you look at this at first, let's format it best we can. When you look at this right now, so we got, I think the getter method is pretty straightforward. You, you get a new variable and you can give it some type of value. So you, you have no parameters here, right? So you get no parameters. This is a method function and you return something. You return some type of value. So this variable will have this value, right? Because you return something. Setter methods are different because you're not returning anything. You have one parameter, but it's not really a parameter in my mind. It is more the value of this variable itself that you set. And then you can have logic inside of here. Without the setter method here, we really can't have logic, right? We, we could use a, a different thing, like right here, we could use a, um, a, a different method inside. So you could say um, flower method and create something like this. And then you can have the if else statements themselves. But then you actually have to activate the, the um, you have to have my cake dot flower method in order to activate this particular method. Here, we're directly accessing the variable and getting values out of it. So I, I hope that's nice and simple in terms of by giving you this flexibility, it will make the code much easier, much more straightforward. So you don't have to deal with another method, a method upon a method. You just come with it all at the same time through your getters and setter methods. So that's where the flexibility actually comes in. Setter methods, you can add logic to it. Getter methods, you can change the values of some of your variables themselves. And if you do not do both, so you do, if you don't have a getter and a setter method, you'll only have one or the other it, itself, unless you use the default which comes with the system. All right, so I hope that was clear. It was not clear to me for the first 20 times it was explained to me, but but I hope that clarifies things. If not, feel free to leave a comment to the comment, se comment section. Thank you.